Hey, welcome back to Lin- Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Did I say Linux? I did. I meant <laughs> yeah, Linux. Right. Weekly Daily <laughs> Wednesdays. We're going to sit back, relax, take a midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else. Let's say Linux again because, ha, Linux. <laughs> I'm Ben Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And over there is Pedro Mateus. And everyone watches us live on Twitch. How's it going, man? We got a lot to get into. Uh, before the show, uh, during the live stream, I had to go get a power supply. Ooh, mm. it's power supply because power supply, and I got like three extra boxes down here that uh, one of each is for uh, these two, but the third one we use for the after shows. And on Saturdays, we bring in everyone on Discord to live stream, like, hey, come party with us, play some games, and all that fun stuff. It doesn't have a monitor hooked up to it, so it's real easy to forget to power it down after the end of uh, a six hour stream <laughs> at 2 30 in the morning. I'm like, ah, whatever. And it's real quiet. Shut everything down in the studio. Whatever. Take a nap. So it's like seven o'clock, you know, I slept for like three hours. Like, okay, gotta get up and edit the show on Sunday. And I'm in here, I got everything on. I'm importing and adjusting video, then I hear out of nowhere. Ooh. <laughs> I, I might have weed myself a bit. Um, <laughs> brain's not ready for that <laughs> going from just dead silence to a grindy fan that was uh yeah that wasn't fun like a scary my sound. brain wasn't ready for that and uh so yeah i ended up uh pulling the power supply out what did it look like it looked a bit like uh let's see do i have that if you follow me on social media i i applied I administered several rounds of kinetic therapy to the end of the power supply while it was still in the case in hopes of uh, solving the issue. Nay, it was not to be. But yeah, I got it. I think the fun thing was is I. It turns out I can get, just get a new power supply cheaper than I can replace the fan. So there you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I did that, and um, to reward myself, I punished myself further by buying a. Um, that's a fifty dollar piece of metal. <laughs> camera stick. That's my camera stick, cool. man. It's not. It doesn't even take selfies. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the photography market, and this is the book. This is the cheap one too. This is a racket, man. They they know there's two companies that make these, and what it is, it's one that you can hang sandbags off the end of or weights, so you can have mm-hmm. an overhead shot and. I'm still not pleased about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But I needed it for a thing. Ah. I see the Adafruit logo far. there. <laughs> it's a project that's a video I'm working on and what you think is in this box is not oh. that, but it's a thing for what you think is in the box. Ah. Have fun okay. with that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started trying to figure that out and then just, my brain just tied itself in a knot. No, it's okay. <laughs> How about you, Jill? Anything new? Oh boy. So I've, I've been continuing the, the process of uh, cleaning out this room and getting it ready to, uh, for a new paint, new carpet and remodeling. And the big thing I did this last week was uh, dun, 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 the ethernet, switch uh, brouhaha. I had uh, four Ethernet switches with 16 ports on them full of Ethernet cables that ran to all my computers. So (laughs) I did a lot of (laughs) winding up of cables (laughs) over the week and, you know, disconnecting them and just, uh, you know, cataloging them all and and having fun with that. And that, that was a two-day project. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> so did you at least get to enjoy the spaghetti or was it just roll it up and put it away? <laughs> it was just rolled up. I, I mean, they were all organized because I'm very OCD about trying to keep uh, them as straight as that possible. That removes all the so. fun. You did it yeah. right the first time. <laughs> yeah. And they're all labeled to what computer they went to. And, and I, I'm even color coded, you know, each box was color coded, different color. I had pink ones on one and turquoise on another. And yeah. And, and, 
And each box had a different category of computers. Some went to the old Macs and others went to my old vintage IBMs. And <laughs> I'm a bit OCD with I've that. Got... <laughs> <laughs> I just kept all mine in umbilical cord and I pulled them out and I replaced them with this fancy new technology called fiber optics. So I, I went from 15 <laughs> cables to one, two, three, four. Um, <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> Pedro, as we do every week, uh, minimum effort was applied, so you didn't write anything in the show notes for that. Uh, I, to be fair, nothing really spectacular happened. I bought a video game yesterday. Yay! Uh, that's that's about it. <laughs> did, did you stream anything this week? You got any plans? Anything I did. New? I, I, the, oh. I've been continuing the um, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic or the Adventures of Sir Kicks a Lot Death Boot and the unspicuously placed spy cracks. And uh, yes, the, that that will be an ongoing series until either the game freaks out to a point where I can't play it anymore or I finish it, whichever one comes first. So yeah, that that's on Tuesdays. <laughs> Tune in Tuesdays. Uh, I, I tuned in yesterday to watch you getting cross about traps. <laughs> yes, that place had a lot of traps, mm -hmm. like a lot, and uh, quite a few of them are basically invisible until you get exploded mm -hmm. by one, and then you look for it. It's like ah, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Do you think you'd ever be convinced to stream your games from a meme distro? Ah, oh, yes. I would. <laughs> if it weren't for Jordan already using Fedorf for that uh, Saturday show, What We Do, I myself would be using it. But this, well, this is about the new version of Fedorf. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's your red hat. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> but yes, uh, Fedorf 35 is out and you can get it right now. Uh, the big thing about this particular release is uh, Gnome 41 at least for the workstation variant, uh, it, it it's kind of a boring release, let's be honest. There's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, it's just a couple of version bumps, and yes, the GNOME 41 is like the big thing that people are expecting. Though there was one thing that uh, myself and Jill caught, which was the um, a different silver blue variant. Uh, Kinoit or Kinwat? I, I'm entirely not... Yeah, I'm not sure either. Not <laughs> sure, yeah. Because yeah. it is um, an expression in Japanese uh, to say that that is a tree. <laughs> Kinoite. Um, but it, uh, not entirely sure that that's what uh, Fedora based the name on. But yeah, the... Um, thing about uh, Kinoit, or however you want to pronounce it, uh, is it's kind of like silver blue, but better. Yes. It's better because it uses KDE instead of GNOME. <laughs> Outside of that, it's the same. It is uh, purely built on OS, uh, the uh, RPM OS tree. And and yes, I do mean tree. Uh, and the, so I guess it could be kin Kinoite. Yeah, that makes mm. sense. <laughs> uh, and the, it uses flat packs for uh, the user facing applications. And the, it uses the immutable base the same way that uh, Silver Blue already does. So you get an update to the core OS systems, your reboot, and it it's it's basically Silver Blue with KDE. That's yeah, <laughs> that that's kind of what it is. So that's not going to be the default, is it, Jill? Maybe you want a desktop manager that doesn't constantly leak memory <laughs> or something. Oh, <laughs> we'll yeah. So it, it, <laughs> um, yeah. So Gnome 41 has lots of improvements, and I mean a lot of improvements. It's, it overall is a little bit faster, and um, it's got a new software center, which is pretty nice. That includes a uh, flat pack support, which I am really happy about. So that'll be really nice for Fedorf. Because <laughs> <laughs> Fedora, <laughs> Fedora likes to use the vanilla GNOME. So, good thing. And yeah, it is cool that we have a variant, like Pedro was saying, for Fedora Kanoiti. 
it's very yeah, nice. Good luck with the pronunciation. Nice to have KDE. <laughs> it's yeah. all crazy talk, man. Now, a couple of neat things in this is uh, the cloud images uh, now have hybrid boot support. So, you know, legacy UFEI boot modes, you're good with that. And mm -hmm. Fedora Clone 35 now uses ButterFS. Yay. Now Yay. YouTube can wonder where everything went. Um, <laughs> good <Strong> news. <laughs> For the audio and video stack, Wire Plumber, Session Manager. That's now the default RIP, nice. Pavu Control, and all the other nonsense. So you're going to be able to play with that out of the box, which is neat. Because if you want to play with like the latest pre-configured Wayland and Pipewire stuff, Fedora 35 is the way to do it. Unless, of course, you're a tech YouTuber. Then um, <laughs> you'd probably <laughs> want to use something further outside your wheelhouse of pre-configured usability, right? Like <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it depends on how many <laughs> uh, clicks you want to drag into displaying your own um, shortcomings in reading what's on screen. You got to do it for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Milady. <Fedora. laughs> uh, I could do this whole show, man. I mean, listen. yes. You know what? Mark can prove me. Here you go, Kate. <laughs> that was so cute. There you go, Nick. Aww. Oh, Nick. Yes. That's staying there. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> there's a new Linux kernel out, and I want to tell everyone uh, we are currently running it on the DAW. I went ahead and compiled 5.15, nice. and he's like, well, that, that's not dangerous enough. Let's apply the um, full RT patch to that and get that up and running, and here we are. Oh, very cool. So, yes. So on Halloween Day, yes, last Sunday, Linus Torvald gave us a treat with the Linux kernel 5.15 release. And it includes, gosh, lots of important new features and bug fixes. And this version of the kernel now officially includes the Par Paragon Software's new NTFS file system driver, NTFS 3. Awesome. So for those of you needing to access NTFS volumes, now you can read and write on it much quicker. Yeah, and Linus <laughs> so. was very, very keen on having the Paragon <laughs> stuff included. So very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. cool. <laughs> and there's also initial support for Intel DG2 Alchemist discrete graphics. Yay! Which we should be seeing soon. <laughs> Q1 Yay. 2022, supposedly. Yeah, yes. It'll be interesting. So March 31st. Well, <laughs> it's not like we can put any faith in the benchmarks for Mendel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, True. What's that? Well, our processor was running at two and a half X the uh, power. Hush. Mm, no, it's fine. Same That's thing. a fair. Nope. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there are also improvements for AMD CPUs and GPUs, including temperature monitor monitoring support added for AMD Zen 3 based APUs. And this is something really cool. A new audio driver for the Van Gogh APU, which should benefit Valve's Steam Deck. I was very excited to hear about that. And support for upcoming RDNA 2 graphics cards in the AMD GPU kernel driver. Awesome. Yay. Mm -hmm. Way to go, Linus. <laughs> and, you know, something I was really happy about, it, it didn't get a lot of uh, coverage, but there's a newer Realtek RTL 8188EU Wi-Fi driver. Oh, very good. Because sometimes there were problems with the older one. <laughs> well, I mean, it's Wi-Fi. Don't use it. Um, it's real it's tech Wi-Fi. Wi it, it either yeah, works or you don't trust it doesn't. and you replace the Wi-Fi module. <laughs> with the USB one. <laughs> yeah. So, as I pointed out, um, the Dawn, the studio is currently running 5.15. I got that up and running last night. Uh, I've been fighting like the entire 5.14 series was having problems with my army uh, format converter in the box. But a couple of things about 5.15 you might not know. It's going to be the new long-term support kernel, which that's kind of interesting. That's good to know. And I mean, it's not going to EOL until 2023. So it has all the stuff from 5.14, all the new audio bits with latency mapping and timing and all this stuff some of them are kind of hit and miss i suggest playing with them if you have access to the kernel just build your own it's not terribly difficult uh 
because there's like the new module, the low latency uh, sound USB audio driver, which should give you consistent latency, if anything else. Uh, they had to rework some stuff in the back end. Well, they also, there's even a way to kind of revert it if you run into problems like I did. But I can say the also raw MIDI stuff, all that's working right now. Isn't that right, Daw? That's not going to have any problems during this show. That's right. Okay, now. <laughs> give it a pet then. <laughs> With my foot. Um <laughs> There is also support in the kernel now for the Mark of the Unicorn, the Moto 896HD. And I'll tell you what that's important in just a second, because Pedro has to uh, talk about wearers. It's like the uh, <laughs> yeah. wear <laughs> error, only in Halloween. The wearers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, you may remember that we talked about that during this particular release. The... Um, the big thing was changing all of the warnings to errors so that uh, even if you got a warning during compile, it would fail as though it were an actual error. So apparently uh, after the second bit of news that uh, Linus was saying, yes, this is still very much affecting us and it is slowing things down. It seems like they didn't run in into any more issues. And yeah, after what was it? Two or three uh, release candidates. Okay. There, there's your 515. Go. Yeah. So, very good. Nice. <laughs> what does it good. mean, Pedro? <laughs> I think it means that uh, there's no excuse now. No. <laughs> the, at least as far <laughs> as the kernel goes, there are no warnings. So, all right. <laughs> Hold my GCC. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Throw in the compiler, yes. <laughs> One thing uh, after the show on Saturday, go watch it if you want to come hang out with us live. We do a Linux gaming show, and it has it's kind of entertaining. Uh, during the after show, we we're hanging around doing things, and I noticed I got a message. I was like, Oh, my buddy Tech, <laughs> and uh, it's everyone's favorite, also kernel developer. Um, hit me up Saturday, and I was a little excited. He's like, Hey, man, I'm adding also controls to the internal effects for the Moto MK3 series, like we were just talking, the 896, but he's doing some real work, which you might not know about the Moto, it's audio interface. Um, they, I think they started coming out around 2007 and encompassing the 828, uh, there's the 896, 8 Pre Ultralight, Audio Express, all this fun stuff, but all of the MK3 series have an internal well, you crack them open, you're like, hey, look, there's a Xilinx FPGA in there, and there's a reason for it. They have multi-band EQ, they have compression, they have analog model leveling systems, a bunch of fancy stuff in there on top of all the routing that they can do. But you need an application, and that application only existed on Mac and Windows to access all of the effects from the desktop, because the only other way to do it was to play around with four rotatable, pushable knobs, and like a 20 character LCD screen. It wasn't pretty. So you might as well just said, that eh, once it's not going to use any of the effects. This, this is the beginnings of having reverse engineered all of what is sent back and forth between that to adjust everything through also mixer. So you'd be able to pull it up and adjust your EQ compression and all the other fun stuff, which made me very excited. Very, very excited. Now, getting it set up is going to be a task. It requires several new bits along with like, so you want to be pulling from kernel next. If that doesn't sound like your gem, maybe you shouldn't play around with it. But I look forward to uh, getting a little bit of testing. Now, you might be wondering, why would you want to mess with this? I, I was trying to explain to everybody Saturday night. USB is a dumpster fire protocol for audio interfaces. The audio industry knew this. They immediately went from Firewire to Thunderbolt 1. Like, yeah, no, was what they said to USB audio. <laughs> um, we're kind of in a really, really sweet spot right now because Firewire support on Windows 10, Windows 11, and new versions of Mac, even a double so with a new Mac uh, M1 series, non-existent. Doesn't work. Very much in the Linux kernel, alive and well. So you look at something like a Moto 828 um, MK3 Firewire only, I can go out and pick one of those up for about two, three hundred bucks. Now, on the other hand, that exact same interface, but they make an 828 MK3 hybrid, if you find one of those, it's going to be closer to $800. Mm -hmm. 
you get the idea here. What mm. same device? It's just nobody can use this other one, so people are just dumping them, and they're fantastic. These are not low end; they're not old; they're not antiquated. Audio technology just moves at a relatively glacier pace compared to what you would think. Like that's why I think anybody doing audio production under Arch, I'm like, why do you age yourself? Um, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> more power to you uh so those are out there if you happen to run across an mk3 like a ultralight or something like that go ahead and pick it up do yourself a favor and uh but if you just want something that's like easy to just plug in like i just want to do this and talk on the twitch go check out my interface in linux the uh scarlet focus right solo that's a great one about 100 bucks but if you want to do something fancy there are very very good deals to be taken advantage of from linux that or nowhere else. Like even Pedro's coming to you through an audio interface that is not compatible with Windows or Mac. <laughs> no, no, it really is not. Uh, that that um, a Pookie <laughs> duet yeah. is doing very, very well. So, uh, and my ear is very, very much like the sound of that particular preamp too. So, eh, there you go. <laughs> how, how, how many hundreds of dollars did the uh, Good Fire Wire card cost you? Uh, <laughs> 35 pounds. No. Oh. And I had to ship it in from France. Well, okay. Well, I, it took a weekend to get it set up though, right? Yes. <laughs> a lot of going back and forth. Okay. So what do I do now? Oh, it's throwing a lot of X runs. What do I do? Uh, started from the command. Oh, there we go. Oh, All no, right. that, that's cool. just audio in general, Pedro. I'm talking about <laughs> getting it installed. You know, you had to get the drivers configured and everything for the fireware. Oh card. yeah. No, that was plug it in, plug the thing. And it's like, oh, it already <laughs> makes sound. It's already technically uh, working. I okay. mean, Jack didn't like it very much, but it was working fine with all. So it's like, well, oh. here's something. Okay, this is an interesting <laughs> conversation to have real quick. Is you had the experience of, okay, I got the card, I plugged it in, it's not doing what I want, but you didn't throw Linux under the bus immediately. What did you do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I uh, kept working on it, but then again, I had already had a another interface, which was the MBOX 2, that was working just fine, and I had the, uh, the Apugi 1, which also worked just fine, except it's not shielded, so it picks up on all of the interference. Uh, the um, Yeah, so I knew that my system, as far as I knew, was working fine. It's just that's the thing that changed, so that had to be the issue. Linux was already there. It was clearly already working. So, eh. so you knew it was possible. <laughs> this is what I'm, what I'm getting to, is just because you can't figure out how to make something work, doesn't mean it doesn't work. It might not work for you. Yes. Right. <laughs> because, it means that you don't want to do the work to make it work. Well, you know, everyone in the Linux community, wanting to or not, you got to pay attention to the uh, Linus Tech Tip things. And it was like, how does this entire argument change if you replace Linux with uh, Apple M1? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't. It's the same one. Oh. But no, Apple is a premium brand, while Linux is seen as the budget option. The um, I don't well, want to get political. I think about <laughs> that. I had to think about that today because I saw Code Weavers <laughs> post a thing. Code Weavers makes crossover, and you know they're working on M1 stuff. And like it kind of runs on the M1. You can kind of game on it a little bit if you squint. And um, <laughs> like, what is that setup like? That, that's not out of the box. You could use third party tools and. Like, seriously. And you can't use Apple's ones because they don't exactly open the source well, to their stuff. Well, where's that up to so is better it, than nothing. But they have to re-engineer yeah, everything. It's like gaming on <laughs> Linux versus, or gaming on Windows versus gaming on an M1. Like, I would watch that video. <laughs> <laughs> they can't make that video because then uh, Apple might um, throw their lawyers I, for some I, I don't think so. Here's what I want to see. Gaming on the M1 versus gaming on Linux. <laughs> well, you already know it. it's going to be better. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, there's until- this Linux device that's coming out that is going to supposedly be able to play all the video games currently available yes. on the Steam platform. Steam uh, well, Deck. I still want to do the video <laughs> where we take two, two identical just hardware blocks, PCs, and we do time to Counter Strike, where we start with a Linux USB thumb drive and a Windows. 
whatever the equivalent of that oh, is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and an and the Counter Strike is good. Yes. Right. And just be the first person <laughs> to get up and running in Counter Strike online. Mm hmm. Who knows? It could happen. But yeah, we need to talk about Firefox. Firefox is a thing, and it, it's got the biggest new feature. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been waiting for it, clamoring for it. You know, I'm talking about the ability to pick your own color palette. That is right. <laughs> Six fun seasonal colorways available <laughs> for, for a limited time only. <gasps> <It, laughs> can genuinely not understand why any engineering effort was wasted on this because I wanted to start this off with having solved all other issues. Mozilla has. Um, anyway. Well, it turns out a lot of their users use the colorways options. No, to I, there's a hundred percent disconnect between the hardcore people still <laughs> fighting for Firefox going, you do it. Okay. We, we got to make yeah. sure that we're still using Firefox and Firefox team going, <laughs> they want colors. <laughs> Let's make it look pretty. I don't think that was necessarily yeah. the case, but <laughs> the big news for this, the big news, the new version of Firefox 94 is they're switching the graphics stack, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. uh, moving from GLX to EGL, but it was already on EGL, on Whalen, yes, yes, but we're talking about an X, because now you can play with the EGL goodness on X using your NVIDIA card. That's what changed, um, you know. I tried Though it. You need I enabled a it. Specific driver for that. Yeah, by specific you mean <laughs> you need the most recent updated non-beta driver. Yes, you need 495 because that's the one that implements uh, GBM, GBM over uh, or uh, EGL over GBM, something like that. I get confused. Nvidia. <laughs> and, uh, you do have to enable it. Uh, it's not enabled by default right now. You go into about config and whatever and set the uh, gfx x11 egl force put that on enabled yes and it appears to be working i enabled it nothing exploded i went to youtube and i, I went to our web zone and uh the reason they didn't enable this because it's like i think it's some power saving wake event bug causing some flickering mm -hmm. or something like that but the thing uh i oh who was it somebody on twitter mentioned uh like, I wonder if it'll work with my NVIDIA 70 series card. Like, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, the 700 series not supported anymore. Sorry. Incorrect, Pedro. <laughs> I set you up, fool. Uh, the 750 Ti is still supported. Correct. Yeah. I the 760 is not. <laughs> well, when you go back and look at the supported things and it doesn't say that, um, then what do you do? <laughs> They said they were dropping Kepler. Kepler is the 700 series and some of the 800 series. So, yeah, it was just the 750 Ti. That was Maxwell. So Let's <laughs> take a look instead of just uh, hmm. taking guesswork on that. Because I, I, I like to be correct. And uh, <laughs> it was in the beta announcement that they I, were dropping. Uh, no, no, no. no. Let's, let's make sure we're looking at the uh, latest. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, nine, five. See, I, I want to be I'd rather be accurate than be correct so that's why main reason I'm checking this uh, 9 750 and 7 750 Ti yeah. 750 and yeah. 745 the Maxwell cards the, the yeah. Maxwell cards yeah I, yeah. I have 750 <laughs> Ti <laughs> no, I don't mind problem. being wrong but uh, it feels good when I'm right yeah, occasionally that, See, I knew you we were right things. Pedro because I have a 750 Ti <laughs> I mean, occasionally, years. if you blindly agree <laughs> enough, you'll be right. Um, now, here's the thing. Unfortunately, the person who hit me up on Twitter asked, will it work with my 740? <laughs> was it a 740? I think it was a 740. Or 760. Nah, was it? It was I one that... It was a 760? It was, it was one... Uh, the 740 is a GT, not a GTX. Yes. It the 745 the is still supported. Yes. But yeah. that, again, that's the Maxwell version. It's just a cut down 750 T 750 GPU. Yeah. Now, can we all agree that the real crime is the 770 is no longer supported? Yeah. The 770? <laughs> Actually, and the 780. Yes. We can I know make the, the joke is about a great uh, card still. the pirate game. Yeah. What was it called? <laughs> uh, the one? The pirate game, that pirate game um, that the developer told us that oh, you have the right hardware, you're just using it. Yes, thank ah. you. 
<laughs> Vendetta Curse of the Ravens Cry. Yes. Oh. <laughs> can't make that joke anymore. Can't even run the game properly anymore, apparently. Dude, <laughs> that game. We should try it under Proton. <laughs> I don't know if I can keep a straight face as soon as combat takes on because it's like he's mm -hmm. poking around a little noodle. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of entertaining, but hey, go play with it. Um, has anybody enabled yeah. it, Joe? Yeah, so I've been playing it on one of my Garuda Linux uh, boxes with an RX 580, and I haven't really noticed too much of speed difference other than some WebGL games did load quicker. <laughs> That, that's my biggest uh, take from it. Although it seemed to be a little faster with tabs. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't notice anything. <laughs> I turned <laughs> it on. Yeah. Let's, let's enable it. I'm running 495. Let's do the thing. Um, yeah. it, it's Firefox. It, it's, it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and with this new release of Firefox 94, one of the cool things is you can use about, you, you can uh, type in about unloads. Um, in the URL to release system resources by manually unloading tabs without closing them, which I thought was really nice. You can, you know, get rid of the resources they're using. <laughs> you, so, you could. Now, I, hear me I out. This is a crazy in. idea. Not use tabs yeah. as bookmarks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're a tab collector, this may be new concept. For you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I don't really use many tabs. I don't usually get more than like 10, but... But this this comes in handy for a lot of people who have like maybe fifty or a hundred tabs. <laughs> yeah. So so when do you have like a legitimate problem? Anything after like say what thirty seven? Uh, when I can only see the icon and I can no longer read the title of the page, that's when I have a problem. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that doesn't count for the hundred I have pinned. <laughs> uh, but those you can only see the icon so I don't pin tabs <laughs> <laughs> I don't know um, like I, I I come from that generation where yeah, yeah, I, having 256 megs of RAM is like what will I ever do with this uh, bounty of memory yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm still in the mindset of like I am my own um, task manager I, I see too many tabs going I'm like oh you mm. trim that down what are we not using and that, that is completely subconscious. That is not, and yes, I'm sitting on a box with 32 gigs of RAM, but I, using eight for reasons, man. Um, that, <laughs> that's good that Firefox did that. And hey, like all seriousness, play with colors. I, the default look the best. <laughs> I clicked through it and like, right then. Um, how do I get the HGL yeah. thing up and running? <laughs> Or just set the the theme to inherit the GTK colors, and then it mm -hmm. will look the same as everything else on your desktop, which is mm -hmm. what you should do. No. I want it to be orange. <laughs> <laughs> you really like Ubuntu? <laughs> orange, yes. The traditional colors of Ubuntu. Orange. Or you can make it look well, pretty half of the like colors. green. It, like I, would, I would accept it anything <laughs> between... Purple and poo brown, but orange, nay. I will fight you yeah, on this. Orange one. and purple, and it's the in betweeny of the orange and purple that's that poo brown. <laughs> 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 it's no longer Debian Brown Editions, what hey, I'm getting man, at. Some people don't remember the brown old days. Um, yeah. That's when I started. <laughs> Axor. And the little drums that, that start up when you yeah, right? start up onto. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Taught an entire generation of Linux users disabled desktop audio. Uh, yes. <laughs> after three years of development, there's a new version of this wild and wacky upstart uh, application called X. Wow. Yeah. This is actually really, there's really exciting. X Where's the file? Yeah. There's an X <laughs> update. X.org server 21.1 is here. And yes, it's been over three years. And thank goodness, I actually was getting worried about X.org development since Wayland is the new hotness, <laughs> so for sure. But there's lots of new features in this version of X.org server 21.1. And one, one is a better Mason build system support. They're getting better and better at making that easier to compile and build. And the 2D acceleration driver for the X server Glamour now has added support for XVFB or the X Virtual Frame Buffer 
display server that happens sometimes in the background. On the mode setting driver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it has X input 2.4 touchpad gesture support. That's a biggie. That, that's yes. really a biggie. We need, yeah, <laughs> we need <laughs> touchpad support on Xorg. Hey, what if you want to, you know, run an old, uh, oh, let's say an old uh, a GUI like I do, like Window Maker on, with touch support. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? You like to do the three finger swipe like you do on other operating systems to say move to the next desktop. Nope, can't do that. Yeah. No, I just walk in and I'm like, what does, does your mouse not have touch support? Mine does. <laughs> it's meant for well, a laptop what, what, don't care technically correct <laughs> what happens when you need to right click on your screen without a mouse <laughs> so. uh, at least I'll, I'll give them that the two finger tap that I, one has worked for I don't a long know. time I was going to yeah, say you step back and work. examine life choices if you ever need to right click on a touch screen <laughs> like, something's went wrong yeah. in your life um <laughs> This coming from the person who uses tablets a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't need to right click, Pedro. Don't need to right click. Yeah, long press. There we go. That's how we do it. <laughs> no, this is pretty dope. I'm very happy to see this. Yeah. Now, um, one of the things, I think the big thing, the big, big takeaway from this that uh, has got a couple of people excited, we've, we're finally, we're going to get it before X is completely abandoned, forgotten about, and it's just a footnote in histories, and it's mm -hmm. only run on oscilloscopes. Variable refresh rate support in X. Nice. Previously thought to be impossible. Properly done, and you don't need to rely on either Mesa for the um, Radeon driver or for the Intel driver or the NVIDIA proprietary driver. Now X can actually do it by itself. Finally. <laughs> How long have uh, variable refresh rate <laughs> monitors been around? I'm st I have two in front of me right now. This one is technically VRR. It's uh, 40 to 60. That's it. That's the VRR mm -hmm. window. But this one, on the other hand, which has also been deemed uh, and tested by NVIDIA to be G-Sync compatible, it goes from 28 to 144 hertz. That's the variable refresh window. So, yeah, you had to use either an NVIDIA card or sacrifice a goat in the third full moon of the year to hope mm -hmm. that you'd get a chance to actually use it with your Radeon card. So I'm glad. I'm very, very, very happy to see that X is finally getting it when Wayland is finally getting to the point where it almost can be you well you can absolutely use it if all you're doing is playing games or browsing the uh, interwebs and you have a radeon gpu use wayland you're good to go but us nvidia people uh we're still stuck on x for all of the reasons that we've been mentioning in the past few episodes uh though i suspect that people like me who have two different monitors with different vrr windows will still be subject to NVIDIA's whims and NVIDIA's driver to be able to do the different speeds of refresh and the uh, having to deal with the memory leaks that KWIN throws because it doesn't like having two different Sounds like a bunch rates. of self-inflicted problems you got over there, Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> I dug my own grave or I made my own bed, so now I'm going to lay in it or lie in it. It's kind of yeah. hard to tell which one when you're technically doing both. But yes, <laughs> the it, I, I, I do that. That's one of the things that I really do want is to have this one at 144 and this one at 60 and then just be able to use my window manager like a window manager. K win bring yes. in a memory leak for the third time that day because you don't like it. You know what? I mean, having. <sighs> No. You know what? I'm team <laughs> consistent refresh rate across all screens now. You've you've convinced me. The the, the yeah. gaming on 144 is very nice. Everything is so smooth. It's so pretty. I like it. See, when I think about yes. that, I my immediately is like, how do you game 1080p60 one dot? 2K144, please. Yeah. Yeah. Give me. <laughs> well, if I'm playing a game, I'm streaming it. Aw. We all need less screen tearing. 
I haven't seen screen tearing in a long time. Yeah, th- that's one of the advantages that the NVIDIA proprietary driver has had. Though, Glamour, yeah. since, you know, accurately enough, mm-hmm. uh, we're talking about uh, X, Glamour has actually been doing a very good job of uh, with the Intel drivers and the Radeon drivers. Just correct, yeah. Eliminating tearing. Mm-hmm. You know, out of curiosity, this, uh, you know, with all, with all the NVIDIA finally moving, I'm like, fine, geez, we'll play ball. Um, doing the bare minimum, NVIDIA. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Uh, I, I, Bend went, the knee. I went and looked. I went and looked. I'm like, where are we at on the Wayland support with XFC? So headed over to the XFC U4 roadmap. And that, it was about 270 words broken out into a timeline that could have been summarized with, yes, we know Wayland exists, period. <laughs> we are aware that it is a thing. Yes. <laughs> The end, as you were. Um, <laughs> fair, you know, fair. <laughs> so it's going to be a minute, lads. Chromebooks, they run Linux. They do, and uh, they will soon be able to run multiple instances of Linux. Uh, I, I I, can't help but feel like this is uh, somewhat inspired by the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux version 2, because, yes, Chromebooks will now uh, allow you to have the uh, Linux uh, Christini implementation, which is it's a container that lets you run um, Linux applications directly from Chrome OS, which is kind of odd since it's Linux based. But let's not get into that. The <laughs> <laughs> the the new UI that uh, will allow you to enable say, okay, I have this Debian container here. Maybe I want a different container with a different distribution and have those two working on a the same Chromebook. That's a very good idea. Can't help but feel like it was inspired by the WSL2, and I can't help but feel like, oh, is Google finally, finally trying to make Chrome OS into a proper operating system? Well, because, come on, you got to yes, think about it. Think it was, about it, man. You got Microsoft <laughs> sitting over yeah. there. It's like, uh, Microsoft's adding Linux, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So my big question about this is your average Chromebook has about 512 kilobytes of memory and no storage. So two gigs and 16 gigs, respectively. <laughs> well, that is yeah. the cheap, uh, that is the cheap entry level Chromebook that most schools seem, uh, seem to give out to their students. Mm-hmm. The, the, the 32 gig version EMMC with four gigs of RAM is so much of a better experience. It's, oh, yeah, oh, my computer absolutely. is chugging to even render a single web page to, oh, this is actually very nice for such a low-end thing. Huh. Listen, you, <laughs> do, you don't want to run the risk of students experiencing joy, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. No, you are in school. You are here to have your everything crushed. Right. Your hopes, your ego, Aww. your happiness. <laughs> That's somebody who went to public school. <laughs> I don't well, know. That's my just my experience Steve- with schools in Portugal. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, in fact, I just got my Steve has been a Chromebook with four gigs of RAM, and it has a 32 uh, gig of onboard uh, storage. But That um, should be the minimum course. configuration. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm really happy about this announcement because finally Linux is a first-class citizen on Chromebooks and out of beta after three years? What? Chrome is running Linux? And and the, <laughs> the container system is just now out of beta? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Three but anyways, it's, it's three years. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, yeah, March of 2018. <laughs> wow. So, and uh, what's really cool is, you know, being able to actually run multiple apps that are in containers at the same time is is a big deal. So you can run, you know, Steam on one container and the GIMP on another container. And if you have a nicer Chromebook, you can do that on a lower end one. Uh, it'd be a little hard to pull pull it off, but on a nicer mid range to higher Chromebook, it, I it mean, would work possibly. nicely. I mean, we could possibly get <laughs> Steve a laptop. I'm doing a little bit of research and, you know, <laughs> oh no senior a laptop for seniors i mean don't don't rule it out steve we can find you a laptop. we got the old person computer steve oh 
Well, he's happy because I'm going to be putting Pop OS on his Chromebook. So he's looking forward to that. Man, I can't wait to crack into Steam, eh? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be tough running GNOME on only four gigs of RAM, but okay. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I'll probably go, you know, he likes cinnamon. So I'll probably put cinnamon on there for him. <laughs> you know, I did find out. Gallium. A- Gallium OS. Yeah. I think I posted it last <laughs> night, maybe this morning in Discord. Somebody has a modern re-implementation of a CDE. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we talked about it's it like, a while I, ago. We probably Isn't did. that just called XFC? Yeah. No, no, no. CD. No. no, no. XFC. LSD. Nope. <laughs> you sweet sober child. Nay. <laughs> 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 CDE is a completely different beast. I mean, inspired by CDE, yes. CDE, like, yeah. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I started with GNOME. Oh. GNOME 2 back in the day. <laughs> hey, let me tell you what. We started with your support. If you want to support us over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, you can get a bunch of rewards. A brand new show each and every week. It's a little bonus soda we like to throw in. We got a bunch of membership levels. Custom podcast. I'm giving everyone a sneak peek at uh, what I'm going to be working on. What's in the box? I'll be posting about that in Discord later this afternoon to let you know that what is in the box is not what you think. It's something <laughs> for the thing that you think is in the box. I got plans, Pedro. Plans. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. The only thing that keeps popping into my head is uh, <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> Oh, man. A uh, bunch of other ways if you'd like to support the show, head over to LangSchemeCast.com. We got Patreon. We got merch if you want to buy some stuff, PayPal donations. We got wish lists. I got one for the studio. Jordan's got one. Pedro's got one. Jill's got one. That cryptocurrency, it's worthless. Send it all this way and we'll convert it into <laughs> hardware. And we'd like to thank each and every one of you who make this show possible. You didn't have to kick in any cash. You know, we ask like a buck a show and you're like, you know what? I like what you do. I like the commercials. I'm not tracking anything. We host all of our own stuff and we're back each and every week. And we try to build a fun little community for people who are, you know, not brand new to Linux, but they want to kind of further what they got going on. I'm going to try to be helping out that, uh, finishing up the OBS Linux basics for just setting up OBS. Okay. Cause I, I have this great sounding board. Well, not sounding board, but I, I'm watching the uh, squeaky Linus go through this. Like, <laughs> you know, I think I can work on a lot of this and I'm going to make big <laughs> fans with the OBS project for one thing that I'm putting in this video. Um, just, just stay tuned for that. I'll probably release uh, how it's made behind the scenes. Uh, da Vinci like talk through on that one. I'll put it up on a uh, discord. If people want to see that, or I'll post it up on Patreon. But hey, thanks for doing it. Stick around with credits for your names because we put them there. All the fun mm-hmm. people back here on this wall. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody like sharing the show and stuff like that. That's cool. You're our marketing or non existent marketing department, Gorilla Tactics. That's how we promote. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla Tactics. We occasionally drop it's like, oh yeah, that, that there's a thing we do. Here, and link. fedoras. <laughs> fedoras with Gorilla Tactics. That's it. <laughs> Later. <laughs> now Aww. it is time for strawberry. A weekly mm. strawberry pie that for whatever <laughs> reason all right hey i'm not a fan of of the sweets but strawberry seems like not good for pie inside internals guts oh no very see acidic. strawberry is good because yes it is very <laughs> very tart so when yeah. you actually bite into it it's like mm, yes <laughs> Yummy. I, I, I like. <laughs> I like strawberry. It's too. it's one of my favorite flavors. Yes. <laughs> because uh like this is a, there's a bit of a gap between strawberry flavoring and strawberry. You know? Yeah, very different. No, no, I yes. mean <laughs> actual strawberries, yes. I don't mean the <laughs> chemical stuff that you put in your vape stick uh or the <laughs> candy strawberry that no. Mm. No, no. <laughs> well, Kids, uh, let me tell you about something that's absolutely not in this box. And that mm-hmm. is a new product from Raspberry Pi. The Pi Zero 2 W, now on sale for uh, $15. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, it's a $10 more than the original um, $5 Raspberry Pi Zero and Zero W. I have one of those. I made a little mm-hmm. video on it way back when. But 
For your 15 wet, stinky caches, you get a quad core slice of pie. That's right. Four. It's so amazing. One gigahertz. <laughs> CPUs. Now, this is, this is a little bit of a buzzkill for some people, myself included, but again, <laughs> 512. <laughs> that's right. For 15 bucks, you, it's still at 512 megs of low power DDR2. But very important, same form factor, all your old cases and all that fun stuff. It's going to work. Um, now, I, like most people, we talked about this again on uh, Saturday for a little bit, you know, just like what we could do gaming wise. I might be looking into that. Oh, I'm looking at the other stuff. Uh, OpenGL, yes, that's fine. 2.4, triple E. It's got wireless, Bluetooth, all the other fun stuff. Hat compatible, 40 pins. Look at it. It, oh, it It's doing an imitation of the uh, oh, well, Mac Pro uh, with all yeah. the dongles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't count the dongles. <laughs> so and there it is with a little goatee. I mean, it's an impressive bit of kit Aww. for 15 bucks. But I had a data fruit as one always does during the announcement. I'm like, it's out of stock. And I was talking about that on Saturday, and Matthew was like, I have got one in the stock. Yeah. And he, he apparently, <laughs> because apparently between when I mentioned that on Saturday night during the live stream and him going to add a fruit, they had him in stock for 20 seconds. And <laughs> they were immediately gone. Um, I found a company that I, I went searching around, and naturally, we've all been through this experience, is, okay, it's out of stock. How much of a kit do I have to buy to get one? <laughs> because that that's where they're going to be in mm. stock. Somebody's like, oh, I happen to have the $15, but you're going to need to buy our $70 accessory package with cases and useless yeah. blocks of aluminum. <laughs> and really slow SD cards. Yeah. Really questionable cables. Yeah. <laughs> all all, all this fun stuff. Kits. And, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. Like, not going to happen. And I found a, uh, I will name the company next week. Mine's going to be showing up tomorrow. I don't remember the top of my head. Uh, but they had them in stock because I'm not throwing any shade. I order a lot of stuff from Adafruit, but they did something out of fruit. Maybe you might want to look into. They had a little thing when you went to order your Raspberry Pi Zero W. It said limit one. And they were in stock. Mm, Valve. Yay. Limited to one. Continue limiting it to one. Just uh, limit to one. And <laughs> that, that, that's like super Avoid important. Avoid those bots. Well, like, yeah, 15 <laughs> bucks. All of a sudden, 15 bucks. You're like, you know what? I could flip these on Amazon and eBay. I I, I, I can spend, you can get a lot of pies for a couple hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Even if it's just 150, it's like, oh, 10. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What do you think about it, Joe? Do you want a little tiny yeah. one? You, you you need another pie that you oh, can just straight love- up lose? Because I I know where mine is because I had to put it in a box because I would lose it if I left it later. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have the five dollar one I got at Micro Center last time I was there, and that's that's great. But I was really in, in impressed that this thing has a this little little SOC has a quad core CPU. That's actually really amazing. And um, it's also got 512 megs of RAM, which is actually big enough to run a lightweight Linux uh, GUI without too much trouble. You know, especially if you're you want to run Flexbox or Window Maker, and of course, Rad- Raspberry Pi OS's Pixel user interface works nicely on it. But I was impressed. You know, it's not 256; it's 512. <laughs> Yep. And um, <laughs> our Theron before the show posted the link to Jeff Gearling's video where um, mm-hmm. there's already someone out there that's made a um, handheld kit to turn the yeah. Zero Two into a yes. gaming console. See, that, gotta, that didn't take woo-hoo. very long at all. <laughs> we got to do a spin. We got to we, we gotta innovate. We got to come up with a new. We got to appease the YouTube, uh, YouTube algorithm. What we need to do is make a feet held gaming <laughs> i don't think that would necessarily be for youtube mm. another video hosting i'm gonna sell certainly. it to quentin Tarantino. <laughs> shut up uh, yeah I'm gonna play around with it. Um, I, there's a bunch of things to play with uh, low memory i would strongly advise this is very much like the original raspberry pi i talked about this a bit when they came out um mm. You know, we got one like everybody else did. And first thing I did was, you know, composite. Like, can this thing run X? It had finally crawled its way up to an X display that technically launched. I'm like, 
all right, I'm good. That's all I wanted to see. And, and that was, <laughs> I might have that experience, but this would be slightly better being quad court 512 megabits around, but don't, th- these are not designed for, um, you know, desktop usage of any, I yeah. was surprised though. Um, mm-hmm. I might be able to like repurpose this. This will ultimately probably end its life running a, um, web server with um obs mm-hmm. web sockets that i currently have a pi 4 running which um uh, to power my nice. stream deck so i'm thinking about 3d printing a kit so frosty if you're listening you've messed up when you said just let me know and i'll get you something printed uh yeah <laughs> looking forward to it what do we have up mm-hmm. next up next we so have cool. someone who decided mm-hmm. to play around with the uh, high quality camera for the raspberry pi and uh, when paired with a Raspberry Pi 4, the 4 gigabyte model, but that's not really important. I hate to interrupt, I just had an idea. Do you think Go we ahead. can install Windows 10 on a Pi 0 W? I think someone's going to try. It's not going to be a good experience, uh, but I think someone's going to try. I'm out of no. <laughs> uh, Even on the 4, it is atrocious. So, yeah. No. Ladies and gentlemen, all I'm <laughs> Maybe saying Windows is Server, just might- barely. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to tune in Friday. As you <laughs> <laughs> Ven installs Windows 10 on a pie. The um not yeah, no, the, this one <laughs> this one is probably not going to be quite as interesting as what's coming on Friday, but uh, it is very, very insane actually. Because I am uh, sick what's and tired the name of the person Canadian Spoon propaganda. Post. Yes. Uh <laughs> decided to you, you see that footage that Ven is playing there if you're watching the video version? Mm-hmm. That was all How recorded nice looks. on the uh, little experiment that this person did with the Pi 4 and the Pi high quality camera and a teeny tiny little 6 mil lens. I'm also and you can actually guy. see. Hmm? When I saw this, okay, I looked at the video. I was like, video looks right. My first thought was, <laughs> oh, I hate saying this. I hate saying this, but you gotta be real with everyone. It's like, yeah. who was watching Da Vinci's whole film grading? Um, to do it. I was like, wow, that looks like it's got the right amount of uh, blue added to it and the green. It's like, that was color yeah, graded. And yeah. I scroll Definitely down is. and I'm like, of course. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was watching those. All right. We made it cinematic. Yeah, no. They made... Uh, the effort here is very much to remove all of the automatic image processing and white balancing. Oh, that. And Isn't that attractive? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And remove all of that and just let I- either the person who is getting the footage from the pipe with the high quality camera uh, or the editor using uh, DaVinci Resolve, for example, like they did. And according to a school post, which is the person who tried this, uh, they're also on um, GitHub. And this gives you the same image quality at the, what's the resolution? Uh 2028 20, by 1080, that's uh, 17 by 9, in case you're wondering. Uh, 24 FPS gives you the same image quality as a $1,000 camcorder video camera yeah, type of situation. Asterix. <laughs> <asterisks. laughs> yeah, yeah, a little low resolution, <laughs> Which but yes. Is it insane. Great. I mean, that's, that's really good for something that you can put together yourself for about 100 Well, except for the lens. Then again, it's It's just the 6 mil lens, so it's not going to run away like some of the other lenses. (laughs) But, yeah. Yeah. 90%, I'm going to say 90 plus percent of your image quality is going to come from the glass on it. And let's, I said this, and I say this is somebody who owns $100 worth of the pro camera lenses. Um, These are CCTV lenses. This, This glass is not, best of the best yeah. it's, it's really good webcam level mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> but for a hundred dollars and, and a, a raspberry bit of editing, pie you can actually yeah. do uh, admittedly with only 40 <laughs> seconds the mm-hmm. uh, footage that they have there of the can and then the drink with the focus shifting and if you're looking at the reflection you can actually see him going like Shh. i want to play with this this has Tons and tons of potential. I mean, if, um, oh, absolutely. depending on the ability to like hack in, or maybe it's already there, I haven't had a head chance to play with this. Uh, the, the ability to get an, a clean HDMI feed out of this, I'll squeal a little bit because mm-hmm. then we could mm-hmm. be setting up, Woo-hoo. uh, designing very simple kits for, you know, DSLR ish 
quality level um, webcams really much on the cheap. And I want to applaud them because they have spent the time. I'm not joking. Go back, check the show notes if you want some links to look at it for yourself. Uh, Making this usable as a camera, like Mm -hmm. conceptually, just from the beginning, and it doesn't have random bits flopping about and having the proper live view. This would have definitely an eight out of nine on the TSA acceptance scale. I would say there's oh, yeah. a with that case that they show yeah. in the picture there, that that looks like a camera. There's, oh, there's a that's a camera. Okay. Almost guaranteed <laughs> probability <laughs> of getting this through the TSA without them going down as a bomb. Right. <laughs> I think it's a very, yeah. very cool project and um very excited about it. And I have all the parts to play around with it, so I probably mm-hmm. will. Uh, depending on whether or not I can get, I can turn the uh, Pi Zero uh, W2. I wish I'd kept my original Zero, but I gave it to a kid, and I think they probably ate it or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as kids are off to do. <laughs> it was five yeah. bucks, man. I'm like, here, go educate. Well, whatever you want. <laughs> it's me being me, dude. I'm like, this is why I'm like, ah, oh, clutter. Hey, if you want to tell us about your Pi Power projects, uh, Jill, you want to uh, think about maybe making one into a broadcast studio quality camera? Well, no, no, no. Just as an as an extra to do a little uh, filming in here, you know, instead of spending another fourteen hundred dollars on a high end camera. I mean, you could just take that one off the uh, camera stand. I know, but I want to keep it there. <laughs> 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 is it in good position? Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. This is why you it's buy a really good wall It's hard for me to get to. So. <laughs> mine doesn't. Mine, yeah, that mine is... doesn't even work as a camera. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I got mine on a tripod, but I can't reach it, and and that is an it, that is an issue because my that's probably for the best. Monitor is so big, so I kind of want to keep that one there and then have another one. <laughs> this would be fun to play around with, and uh, yeah. Uh, different lenses, oh, a lot of possibilities, a lot of possibilities. I'm curious to see yeah. what it looks like when it hasn't been run through the uh, cinematic <laughs> filters with DaVinci yeah. Resolve. <laughs> I say yes. that because it, it is, that's the thing. It's remove everything that the Pi does to the high quality camera by default and just give you the raw image. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I still, I mean, it's been over a year since I didn't like the original Raspberry Pi zero webcam video i want to see where they've gone as far as adapter wise because i i i got a bunch of glass like nikon glass and i'm sure somebody's made an adapter plate for it by now to actually put a decent lens on it and see what type of quality we can get out of it oh they had the pictures with the big uh telescopic well, lens exactly on it. <laughs> and plus i think that would look <laughs> infinitely more hilarious with the raspberry zero <laughs> <laughs> it's for the bits hey everyone uh as i was saying if you want to get in touch with us head over to lemonschemecast.com smash that contact button fam send us a message you got something going on maybe you're working on a project like this and you'd like to come plug it and chill mm-hmm. we'd love to have you and um yeah uh leave us a comment on youtube patreon anywhere that we can be found but we're running a little bit long so we gotta bounce out of here i gotta roll the credits so that means i gotta click on things you gotta do that? Yeah. And I got a credits button Roll somewhere. Those there credits, it is. Ben. <laughs> Yay. Such enthusiasm. Yeah. What? <laughs> Thank oh, you, the camera's everyone still on. in oh, chat. Oh, gosh dang it. <laughs> Art Theron, Daisy, Strider, Steve Husband, Altimore, <laughs> Becca Farm is in there. Gosh, we had so many people in today. This is just great. Yeah. <laughs> It, not only, Don M. <laughs> not only was the show, you know, created because of everyone's like, yeah, no, you should totally do a more Linuxy general thing, uh, but uh, they're also here watching. That yeah, you're crazy look people, you. <laughs> <laughs> we love you all. <laughs> and now you have a heart mask to prove it. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>